moving on. You know, I wonder if anybody knows who said that quote. <coughs> well, you know now. <laughs> <laughs> to danger, and it works the same in every country. Now, who said this? You already know. <laughs> Does anybody remember who it was? <laughs> Don't tell me that we just have an illusion. I will tell you. What are you doing? Old Nazi pants himself. <laughs> He's seen here with, uh, oh, no, no, Uncle Cuts. We're going to call them Uncle Cuddles in happier times. Do you still think I'm crazy? Well, let's take a little look at our own little Reichstag fire, eh? Our own little 9-11. 9-11! 9-1-1! Terror! War on terror! 9-11! Terrorism! Terror storm! Terror! Believed to be linked to Al-Qaeda. <laughs> the 11th day of the ninth month of 2001. Those towers came crashing down, bless their souls. But I guess I'm still in shock and awe because no other steel frame building in history has fallen from fire. Ever. You know, once in Spain, one burned for days with red hot flames and it didn't collapse. You know, when I watched these buildings fall on TV, I didn't see the buildings pancake down into a pile of office stuff and bodies trapped between. No, there was nothing left. Everything was gone, fused into a mess. Now experts say, if the buildings had pancaked, the collapses would have taken 40 seconds with the resistance. Well, that's four times longer than I watched them fall in. So all kind of weirds me out. And and I have to keep reminding myself that these collapses were totally. I mean, none of the massive core columns were left sticking up in the air like an upside down spider or something, no. Everything just went at once. The towers fell in 10 seconds. Now I know that it is physically and scientifically impossible for the buildings to fall as they did, yet they did fall 10 floors per second. Is that evidence of something fishy going on, eh? Well, I don't know, but these white elephants were pulverized. Now look at this picture. This is a picture of one of the towers when it was being built. Check out the core. I don't know. Can jet fuel, kerosene, burn, melt, destroy, pulverize to dust these massive concrete and steel columns? I don't know, but wait and see. Because... In the molten steel from the bottom of ground zero, Dr. Stephen Jones of Brigham Young University found the telltale signs of thermite. That's a substance used for cutting steel in demolitions. Now, I don't know, my dear. I don't know if planes and fire could bring these buildings down. I think, I think, Baloney has that first name. It's D-E-M-O-N-I-T-I-O-N. <laughs> That's a smart kid. <laughs> I just think that a controlled demolition using high-tech explosives is a little more physics and logic 101. I mean, the face of this puppy was still molten weeks later, for heaven's sakes. Now jet fuel will burn up real quick. 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit steel. 
only begins to melt after hours at 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, not 56 minutes with a smoldering oxygen star fire, so how could it happen? I mean, I bake, you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I burned some cookies and my pan never melted and it didn't weaken and my oven is okay! <laughs> topographical map, and it's made using lasers, so it's very modern. <coughs> yeah, now this is ground zero. And as you can see, everything's gone. There's nothing left. People, desks, files, photocopiers, faxes, pulverized into pyroclastic flows of white ash. <sighs> oh, it was a beautiful day that day. Do you remember the nice blue sky? It was a perfect day for photography. And the towers fell. Free fall speed, no resistance. Oh, I say fish are fishy, because something kind of stinks up here anyways. Oh! <laughs> That's a red herring. <laughs> you run into lots of these once you start looking here. <laughs> Sorry about that, it's very stinky. Moving on. <laughs>